Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to get the number of rows affected by DML commands. This is the fifth video from Snowflake scripting playlist. How to get the number of rows affected by DML commands. After each DML command is executed, Snowflake scripting sets following global variables. These are the three global variables we can use to get the number of rows affected by DML commands. The first one is the SQL row count. Number of rows affected by last DML statement. Please note that if you have a more than one DML statements in your procedure, then this SQL row count will return last DML statement. This is equivalent to get num duplicate rows updated in JavaScript stored procedure. The second variable SQL found. This returns true or false. If returns true, that means if the last DML statement affected one or more rows. Say example, your statement, any statement, any DML statement returns more one or more, at least one row. Then SQL found returns true. And third variable SQL not found. True, if returns true, that means if the last DML statement affected zero rows. That means, say example, if you run any update statement, that ad update statement returns zero rows. In that case, the SQL not found returns true. These are the three variables currently available in Snowflake to get the number of rows affected by DML commands. You can use these three variables to determine if last DML statement affected by any rows. As I said that, even though if you have multiple DML statements are there in your procedure, these three variables will ap applicable or only last DML statement. Please note that select statement is not a DML statement and has no effect on the SQL row count variable. So if you have any select statement inside your procedure, so these variables will not SQL row count, especially SQL row count not applicable. Let's see same in action, DML commands. As I said that we have a three global variables, SQL row count, SQL found, SQL not found. We'll see one by one with examples. Here I'm going to use the database Snowflake underscore scripting schema is the main warehouse compute underscore WH. I have executed. Here I am going to create one table called my underscore table with one column col1 column 1 and data type is number. Okay, let me execute this table. Yeah, table created, table my table successfully created. In the first example, what I am going to do, I am going to do with one insert statement and select statement. See, please note that here I am using the classic web interface. So, to begin with any anonymous block, to write anonymous block, you have to use okay, execute immediate dollar dollar inside your uh, double dollar. You have to write here. Here I am going to use the only anonymous blocks as part of this demo. I am not going to use any uh, procedures, named procedures. So, here in this statement, okay, in this block, what I am going to do, insert four rows into a table, which I created a my underscore table. And uh, please note that these are the comments just for our understanding purpose. SQL row count is not affected by statements, statement, self statements that are not DML statements that are not part of the any DML. For example, select statement. Here, select star from table. After inserting the four rows, just I am retrieving the data from that table. Okay, returns the number of rows by affected by last DML statement. Here, last DML statement is nothing but a insert only. Okay, select statement will not consider. So, return keyword SQL row count. This is the variable name. Directly you can use the variable name. So, now let me execute this entire code. Okay. So, what would be the output? Here see anonymous block and four rows written because we have inserted four rows only. And also when you run this alone, okay, outside, what would be the output? Here also only four only, but we don't know which, I mean, as of now, 
the SQL row count always work on the DML statement, not select statement. Okay, so please note that this output come from this statement, not select statement. Okay, now let's see another example. Before going to do that one, let me truncate the data from my underscore table. Now two insert statement. I am going to keep the two insert statements here. Insert from one statement four rows i am going to insert and this statement two rows so total we are going to have six rows in this table so let me run this one and if you after executing make sure that you know dml statement this row row uh, sql row count will return last statement last dml statement okay so now let's me last dml statement here this is the last so that means we are going to see two rows Okay, output would be the two. See, anonymous block two. Now, after this, we we are going to see how many rows? Six rows. Okay, see six rows. Even we have a more than one DML statement inside your block or stored procedure. The SQL row count always returns last DML statement. Okay, here last DML statement. Insert statement. So I said. Now we will see the update statement with SQL no found. Okay, this is the another variable. Okay, here in this example, what I am going to do? Update the rows in the table that have values less than three. Less than three values in the table, we have only two rows. Okay, update my table set column equal to four, where column one less than three. Here we have, uh, and I am using the select statement with no effect. And also, if condition here, if you see if statements SQL found equal to this is the one variable true, then return updated SQL row count and rows. So here we are using the this variable. And else, if it is not if it is not true, then else if SQL not found is equal to two, then no rows updated. Else, this third case, okay, both are not satisfied. Now let me run this one. See updated two rows. Updated is the you know hard coded inside this one. Two is the return. Okay, this value return from the SQL row count inside SQL found because this is the output we got updated. This is value two rows because this update statement affected two rows. Okay, so now let's see another example update statement with SQL not okay not found. With this variable, what I am going to do as part of this anonymous block, update my table set column one is equal to four, where one equal to. This is a for always false statement, so that zero rows update is going to update it. So now zero rows update means SQL found is true. That means it, this value would be false, and SQL not found would be true because here zero rows not affected. Okay, so uh, so now let me everything is same only. Okay. Code wise, no. Only the update statement only difference from the previous example. Now let me execute this one. See output no rows updated. That means now here branch. I mean inside this. Okay, no rows updated because SQL no data found here. If you uh, run explicitly this statement, you will come to know how many rows affected from this statement. Obviously, it is a false condition. So zero rows, okay, zero rows. Now we'll see the delete statement. Yes. So here simply uh, execute immediate dollar dollar begin delete from my table return SQL row count. So I think we have six rows in our table. So after executing this one, okay, let's execute six rows. Anonymous block six rows. Please note that I will. Provide all these examples in the description. So now we will see the merge statement. Merge with update only. See merge with update only. A merge with update and insert also we have. First we will see the merge with update only. So before that executing that one, what I am going to do? Let me create one table, target table, and I am going to insert one row. Okay. Let me table created and one row inserted. So create or replace another table, source table. Let me execute this one also. Okay, 
so this is the source table that is the target table and i am going to insert this one also one row yeah okay one row inserted here 10 to be updated this this new value this description please note that this is the for source table uh, new values the target table old values the description okay description is different and id is the same id and description two columns are there okay so now what i am going to do here we have a sim simple update med statement with update only see merge into target table using source table on target table dot id equal to source table dot id when matched then update there is no other statement so let me execute this one see anonymous block one that means one row has been updated okay now if you see the data from the target table we inserted with the old value okay from target table so select start from target table see to be updated this new value new value this this description came from our source table okay one now i'm going to show you the multi insert so to do this one what i am going to do i am going to create a two tables target tables with three columns all okay uh, data types their column data types number only for simple simple uh, simplicity okay purpose so here uh, i am going to create one source table okay with column names different but data type is the same please note that okay column names is different and here i am going to insert the two rows okay into source table two rows and now i am going to perform the insert all statement okay here insert all statement please note that insert all into t1 here i am not going to specify any column names that means we have to use the all three columns because our source table also having the three columns if you don't mention any this column then we will get error but here we don't get any error because the we have a exact column names from source and target so now i am going to execute this one the moment after executing this one the return sql row count should return four rows because in our source table we have a two records two rows but we are inserting the two rows into t1 one table and another table t2 that means four rows should be written this way from this variable sql row count variable so let's execute this one see anonymous block output four now let me let me see the rows from these two tables so i obviously okay four rows t1 we have two rows and t2 we have two rows now last case truncate statement okay as we know that in snowflake the truncate statement comes under dml statement however when you use this truncate statement as part of you know uh, row count sql row count variable on okay so this is also dml statement only but we'll see how okay what is going to happen when use the truncate table okay let me execute so before uh, going to uh, execute this one let me see is there any records from this table okay zero rows are there so what i am going to do let me insert one row insert values okay yeah one row inserted now we'll yeah now i'm going to execute this anonymous block truncate table my table written sql row count so let me execute this one see the output null okay so with the truncate statement sql row count didn't return any value but we'll see whether this truncate table has been executed or not okay we have a one row before executing this one now we'll see what is what is the data from this table see truncate actually truncate statement executed successfully inside this block however sql row count 
didn't return any value. That means this SQL row count always works on DML statements, whether it could be insert, update, delete, merge, multi, insert all, but it will not work on truncate table. Yeah, that's all from this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on bell icon for notifications. Like it and share it to your friends. Thank you once again.